Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to today's Equipment Autopsy. In this episode, we have the little siren that couldn't. It, it just, nope. So this is one that we used to use for live demonstrations and such, and it just died on us. It's very sad. So we're going to take it apart and see what we can see. I don't expect there to be a whole lot to this, especially since it looks like somebody already tried to fix it. Batman has been in here. So, let's see what we've got. There's a lot of plugs. And there's some cut wires. So I don't feel too good about it. Let's start with the board. What do we have? We have a L, I gotta pick that up and see it. L8C2K0 and a L9E. 7R5, those are the ICs there, and then we got a bunch of passives, nothing major, and this would probably be our output here. It ran off a giant pile of batteries, like this thing uses a bunch of big D-cell batteries, so there's your circuit, there's your component side. It's rock simple. This is the kind of thing that you could totally make in an afternoon without any trouble at all. I'm sure that there are a million kits out there for a battery powered amplifier. So that's, this is your amplifier. It also probably has a little simple waveform generator for the siren, which is also really easy to do. Let's see, okay, so there's our, it's a differential mic. Look at that. It's a differential mic, that's what it says there. And it gives us a button with a lock on it. And there's a microphone up front, and there's a thing in the back. There might be two different microphones, and that might be used to as like a set them up in antiphase for noise canceling because it's really easy because you've got you got a microphone here mounted on the back of a big amplifier and speakers, so it's really easy to get really bad feedback with that. Let's take it apart, see what we can see. Going from a trusty number two Phillips. Oh, there's nuts on the inside. There. So there's the mic, which we'll actually keep because that's handy for something. Oh, oh, look at this. I see missing screws right here. Two missing screws. This is what happens when other people try to fix things. Spin the nuts off. Cool. This is actually labeled transistor megaphone. It's got a siren mode and a talk mode. So this is just two really cheap yum cha switches. There's a little slidey switch here and the switch down here. Now this is uh, the one that you can get at, well, it used to be able to get at Radio Shack. I don't know where we got it, but I've, I've seen a bunch of these. They're really common. This is if you are in need of a professional high quality megaphone, like if you're a marching band director or something like that, don't buy this. It's, it's absolute garbage. This is, this is not what you, if you're a DEA agent, this is the megaphone you want. If you're an elite fighting force or something and you need an excuse to just attack everyone because they won't talk to you, this is the megaphone you want. So we'll take off the shell here. This is the housing where all the batteries and electronics go. It has three out of four screws, so that can't be that bad. Okay, and, and there's nothing in here. That's just a tube. So now we're down to this, and I have two wires and a bolt, and that's it.
It's AC, so it should give us a nice 60 hertz sine wave, shouldn't it? If we just plug this right into an AC power supply, it should, should be all right. It'll probably be all right. Don't try this at home. I have seen years ago a demonstration where a guy who was selling very big speakers took a speaker and connected it directly to an extension cord. It was really quite the sight to see. Um, if you did that to this speaker, eh, there would be fire and a bad smell. We're not going to do that. But I have an AC power. Now, if you do this with DC, you're not going to get anything out of it. It'll, it'll pop and that's it. But with AC, I should. And I can turn this all the way down to zero. I've got a zero to 120 volt, 10 amp AC power supply here. Now, if this speaker is good and I put like a volt through it, it should be fine. It shouldn't hurt the speaker at all. And I should get a, a very soft 60 hertz hum. And you can hear it right now. I'm wearing a microphone, so I'll point it here. And if I turn this up just a little bit. So the speaker works. So let's take it apart. Because I would like to not destroy the speaker, because it's kind of cool, and I'm sure I can do something nifty with it. But I would like to show you inside because usually when you see a speaker, you just see the, the paper cone diaphragm thing. You don't really get to get into this type of speaker with the compression horn and all that. So the trick is, can I get into it? Ah, yes, cool. Okay, now it's gonna get neat and we get to talk about some cool math, okay? Now this part was in there. Right? So I'm going to take that out, and we're left with this big horn. Now, the shape of this horn is very specific. You ever notice that speakers always have this funny megaphone shape? This is a logarithmic horn. Okay, now there's different formulas in that, but just traditionally it's called a logarithmic horn. And it has to do with the ratio at which it opens out. Now, inside it is this. And this is going to have a compression driver in it, which is a speaker very different from what you're used to seeing. Compression drivers are actually really cool. So we're going to open this up because this is a folded horn. Now you've seen a horn like a trombone or something like that, where it's just a long straight pipe that gets bigger the further you go down it. And if you have like a trumpet or something like that, then there will be some valves and stuff. But this is just a horn that's been folded back in on itself. Think of it kind of like a Fresnel lens. If you ever look at a Fresnel lens, a Fresnel lens, instead of having a big curvy lens, it's a bunch of little ripples. If you ever see a lens like on a traffic light or something where it looks like little concentric rings of ripples, that's a Fresnel lens. And if you look at it really close, what it looks like is if somebody took a lens and just smooshed it in and you had all the little the curvy bits stacked side by side. This is the same kind of idea. So what we have, well, I'm just going to take all the pieces off. So here's the middle piece, and then here's the inner piece, which on this little toy one isn't actually going to unfold, but, or unscrew, because it's just glued in there. But I'm going to take this off. This is, this is a really low-end compression driver. Good ones screw together. The actual speaker on here is very small. Let's see if we can do this without killing it. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. That's the speaker. The whole speaker is only a little bit over an inch in diameter. Okay, here's our voice coil. This is our diaphragm. And it's just held in place, floating right here. Here's our pole piece and our magnet. 
So the speaker is very tiny, and oh, I'd have to totally destroy it to do this. All right, I'm going to try and put it back together again because I really don't want to destroy this. It's a good little speaker. So let's see if we can put it back together real quick. See, as I put it together, I have to mind the gap because it's really easy to crush it. and We don't want to do that. And if I put it back together and I've crushed it and it doesn't work anymore, then we're just going to take it entirely apart and gut it. But the, the part here that's really dicey is putting it back together again because if I don't have it perfectly aligned, I'll crush it and it won't go in the gap and then the speaker's instantly destroyed. So I can test this really quick. If it makes sound, then we're okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right, now I'm gonna show you the differences as we do this. So we have our first horn that comes out, and this is just a regular straight horn, exactly like you're expecting a horn to work. This, see how it looks like, okay, we've got a horn. And then if we put this on the end, okay, cool. Now the reason they don't perfect, there's a step is because there has to be enough space. The way this horn works is here we have the outside of the horn and the inside of the horn, right? Now stay with me because this gets weird. This is the outside of the horn for this first section. But as this is folded over on top, this doesn't touch the bottom. There's an air gap. And you'll hear the sound change. And see how it's on these little stands? And I can, I can stick my finger in there. So what happens is, that's the inside of the first stage and the outside of the first stage. This is the outside, or the, the outside of the second stage and the inside of the second stage. This is also the inside of the second stage. So when we put it over, the horn is the space between this and here, so the outside of here and the inside of here becomes a horn. It's, it's a waveguide for acoustical energy. So I'm gonna screw this together. With our little toy screws. The nice thing about working on speakers is, if you ever can't find where your screw went, look down on the magnet. They seldom go far. All right, now we heard how the sound changed when we put the second stage on. Now this is the third stage, and now that's our horn. Our sound is coming out this ring around the bottom. And if we drop this in here, the sound will come, well, I've got to, I've got to feed the wires through. I might be able to make this work like this. Enough to do this part. All right. As we drop this in, now it's way louder because we've got this third section of horn. And Right now, with only two sections, our sound comes out here. When we put it in there, this, the outside of this here, and the inside of the horn become the new section of horn. So it just keeps amplifying it more and more and more. So I'm going to feed the wires down through the little spots where they want to be. Push that in there. Push that in there. So 
is kind of tricky. That'll help. Got one. There's so many things to hold at once. <laughs> Don't fall over. You're going to be okay. This is a really great job for hemostats. Someday I want to meet the little Chinese guy that puts these together with his freakishly tiny arms. Okay, now I have to guide that in there. So I'm cool on that side. Sure, I can totally... Oh, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it. And just push that back manually, and I think it all survived. Where's my big screw? That's my big screw. Is that my big screw? Is there a bigger screw? Yes, there is a bigger screw. Okay, that's my big screw. All right, push this down in tight. kind of snaps in place. And now, if I hook these back up, our speaker works again. That's really cool. All right, so there's a look at folded horn loudspeakers and getting to gut a rather mediocre, boring little, huh, yeah, little bullhorn thing. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Thank you for hanging out with me on today's Equipment Autopsy. And I'm going to show you some more compression drivers soon because I've got some real ones, some like the big Atlas ones that are just massive and they're ridiculously loud. In the meantime, if you want to check out more on these, we did a video years ago. We did a video where I got into looking at sirens and stuff like that, and I take apart one of the big folded horn compression loudspeakers with, with a proper compression driver net, and they're really cool. So, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Check out thegeekgroup.org, and as always, we'll see you next time. If you've only seen our videos, then you've only seen the smallest fraction of what the Geek Group is. It's a place where you can craft, improve on, manufacture, repair, rediscover, test, discuss, research, and share just about any project in a one-of-a-kind massive facility with tools and equipment you might otherwise never get the chance to touch, let alone use for your own projects. The Geek Group is a learning institution. We're people with different skills, backgrounds, and perspectives, figuring out how to make ideas a reality and sharing those insights with everyone. To help you along the way and to get help from you are tens of thousands of members from around the world connected to the lab in real time through internet relay chat and live streaming video. A single-minded appetite for knowledge and a drive to create are traits common to all geeks. We found a way to amplify those traits, a way to give you the resources you need to improve lives. Get involved at thegeekgroup.org. We thank the Future Girl Foundation for the grant that made these videos possible. GIMS.
and the thousands upon thousands of purchases and private donations from members and viewers like you that keep this place running. Thank you.